safe to say we've spent a significant amount of our lives consuming science fiction. Books, videos, movies, and games. Science fiction is great for the imagination. It's rich in iron and calcium and takes us places we could never visit. It also helps us understand and predict what might happen in the future. Tablet computers, cloning, telecommunication satellites, Skype, magic slidey doors, and razors with five blades. And these are just some of the predictions science fiction has made which have come true. And then there are a whole bunch of predictions that have yet to happen but still might. Fun things like the climate change apocalypse, regular robot apocalypse, the giant robot apocalypse, the alien invasion apocalypse, the apocalypse apocalypse, comet apocalypse, and the great Brondo famine of 2506. Not to mention things that will probably never happen. Things that could not be in accordance with the laws of nature. Faster than light travel, instantaneous teleportation, and the ability to destroy whole planets with a space station laser pointer. But there's one future technology, a massive violation of the laws of physics, which plays a role in nearly every single book, show, and movie you can mention. I promise you, if authors, screenwriters, and directors tried to adhere to the laws of physics with even a shred of accuracy, your favorite sci-fi would unfold very differently. I'm talking artificial gravity. It's magical. Captain Kirk can actually stand on the bridge of the USS Enterprise. He just stands there. And he can sit in the mess and enjoy a pint of Romulan ale not served in a plastic bag. Or just go to the bathroom with a freaky weirdo suction toilet. Now, I understand sci-fi authors are imagineering spaceships like ocean-going vessels, yet in space. But that's where they go wrong. On Earth, you can stand on the deck of your warship, drink your Romulan ale from an open-topped, non-collapsible container, and it's all thanks to you, gravity. The Earth is pulling the ale towards its center, and it's stopped by the glass, which is stopped by your meat and skeleton, stopped by your well-polished boots, stopped by the plates on the deck of the ship, held up by the rest of the ship, held up by buoyancy, which all work to keep everything from zipping down to the center of the planet, or at least the floor of the ocean. Out in space, no gravity. Now you've seen the crew on board the International Space Station. Once you're in microgravity, you float around like a balloon. You have to drink and pee into a tube, and one of those involves a vacuum cleaner. Pro tip, do not mix up those tubes. Most importantly, once a spaceship started moving or undertook evasive maneuvers, everyone would ping pong around like crunchy Mito bingo balls. Will we ever develop artificial gravity? The only way to get gravity is with mass. The more mass, the more gravity you get. Without mass, you can't have gravity. And before we go any further, there's no such thing as anti-gravity. Now, that's out of the way. There are a few ways we can fake it. Now, the force of gravity that we feel is actually just an acceleration towards the center of the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared, or 1 g. As Einstein showed us, everything's relative. So if you were in a spacecraft and it was accelerating away from Earth at a rate of 1 g, it would feel exactly the same as if you were standing on the ground. Now this is known as constant acceleration, and if you could somehow power a spacecraft with that much energy, it would be just what you needed. Want to get to the moon? Accelerate at 1 g for an hour and a half, turn around, and decelerate for the same amount of time. Not only would you get to the moon in under three hours, but you would have experienced Earth gravity the entire time. Want to fly to Jupiter? It would only take about 80 hours of acceleration and then 80 hours of deceleration. At the halfway point of this journey, you're going more than 2,800 kilometers per second, which is close to 1% the speed of light. Want to travel a light year? Well, accelerate for a year, then decelerate for a year. And at the midpoint, you'll be going the speed of light. Uh oh, there's the problem. As you probably know, as you approach the speed of light, it requires more and more energy, and you can't go faster than the speed of light. So using this method only lets you travel about a light year at a time. So there's an idea that I'm sure you Arthur C. Clarke fans know, which requires way less energy. 
artificial gravity from centripetal force. Spinning. Take a large enough spacecraft and set it spinning. And thanks to inertia, free floating objects within the spacecraft, like astronauts, would try to fly off into space, but the hull of the spaceship would keep them inside. To make this comfortable, you need a ring shaped spacecraft with a radius of 250 meters. And this ring would need to turn about twice a minute for astronauts within the spacecraft to experience 1G. Building a spacecraft like this is an engineering challenge, but it's probably within the reach of our current technology. And something like this would help us explore the solar system without the health risks of microgravity. So that's right, not only is microgravity super annoying for trying to pee, but it'll also ruin you. Unless we discover anti-gravity, we'll probably never have the kind of artificial gravity we see in science fiction. It's going to be huge rotating rings for the foreseeable future, sadly. So what's your favorite science fiction story that seems to have ignored the problem of artificial gravity? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. And our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Amit Campbell and Ross Trower and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. Whoa, ho, 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 ho.